Well, let's talk about the nation and the 59-year journey. I have joining me tonight to dissect in this part of uh, the program an elder statesman and a chieftain of a Fenifere social political group, Chief Ayo Adebanjo. It's a pleasure having you on a day like this. It's a pleasure Chief to be here. Thank you so much. And from our Abuja studio is Professor of Political Science and author Professor Gideon Fo Adibe. Also is Malam Garba Shewu, Senior Special Assistant to President Muhammad Obuari on Media and Publicity. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. And happy independence, uh, I should say. Let's begin by looking at where we're coming from. Uh, like some of the things that we, we, we showed our viewers across the land today on where we're coming from. 29 years of military, 30 years of civilian. How would you assess our journey so far, Chivadi It's not been impressive. To those of us who fought for independence, it's a big disappointment. We are not where we should be because we have not been lucky to have the right people at the top. So if you say, uh, if you would say th this is a problem of the country since independence, what would that be? Because the people, that, the people are, who, who we have been unfortunate to have have not had the direction of the, those who dream for independence. Mostly because the army did the rest of havoc. The intervention was not a was not a blessing, and you see where we are today. So the, the, military... the people who fought for independence did not get into office after independence. We are lucky at the beginning, from 1960 to 63. For whatever you may say, that was the best period for civilian government. But since the army, since the army intervention in 1966. We have not been fortunate. So, are you blaming the military or the boys in khaki who ruled Nigeria for Nigeria for 29 years? Mostly yes, the... mostly yes. When they came in, they have no right to come in. It okay. was they which interrupted the process we are coming in. Don't forget, before independence in 1960, we had our crisis in 1953 after Mafasi Constitution. That first constitution gave us a unity form of government, which was an antithesis to a, a multinational, multicultural, multi religious society, which we have not won against before. So in 1954, 53, there was crisis by the motion made by Chief Antonio Nauru. That is when the Saudana said, Araba, there is no problem staying with Nigeria because of the unity form of government. He believed then that if Nigeria had independence, that Northern Nigeria would be cheated because they are not as advanced, they are not as educated. So he was opposed to it. But when the crisis came and said it was going, she found no educated him, no. Unfortunately for us at that time, Dr. Azikwe was preaching unity form of government. He was equating one Nigeria to unity form of government. That was what scared Saudana. But she was not educated. No, we can have a united Nigeria under a federal system where every region will develop at its own space. Chivawola was a very strong advocate of federalism. He is the, he is the pioneer, he is the godfather of federalism in Nigeria. Against all odds, he fought for it. Until the crisis came and people saw, oh, we are not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, after that uh, motion for independence, and the federal now ran into crisis, South John Manfasin sacked the ministers from the Western region who took part in the independence self-government motion. Then there was crisis. Then the then Secretary of State for the colonies, Los Santos said for the political leaders, Sanjana, Azikwe, and Shifaolo, what is the problem? Shifaolo said, I warned you. You can't rule this country under a huge form of government. So, I mean, it's, it looks like the same problem which has uh, dominated our agenda since the McPherson Constitution. Uh, it's still in the 1999 Constitution. The issue of the unitary 
uh, form of government. Some of you have said that is not working. Who says so? Who says yeah, you are one of those who have said this unitary, yes. yes. unitary uh, federal that, that, states that, that are running. Warning. That's why I say I even accuse President Buhari that if he loves Nigeria, he should restructure now. The whole conflict we are having in the country is a question of confidence in each other. Okay, Go yeah. to Eastern region. They claim to be uh, isolated. Go to the Avengers. They say they are being cheated. The source control. Go to the middle bed. They say they are being oppressed. So the moment you sit down and you say, to, what are your problems? And that is why I gave, I accused President Buhari that if you love this country, why do you have good go and attack iPod? They say they want to depend. I don't call them. Why do you want to get out of Nigeria? You should stay here. What is your problem? I do this, I do that. No. Then he use force. All right. Let, let, let me talk to Professor Adibi. Uh, uh, Professor Adibi, or, or maybe I should ask uh, Ma Malam, sorry, Professor, maybe I should ask Malam Garba Shehu if he has any response on the plan of government because uh, since uh, Chief Adebanjo has raised his issue of restructuring Nigeria, is any movement of this government or body language tilting towards it? Because the president actually muted that idea of true federalism, which seems to be the slant of the APC in that direction. The president and his political party, the APC, have not changed from their earlier position. Whatever you call it, uh, uh, devolution of power or restructuring, Yes, it is there in our party's manifesto. I think our difference with the, some of those advocates, including the respected uh, gentleman, uh, Chief Adebanjo, that you have over with you there, is the mechanism for achieving this. Uh, I guess uh, some of them think that this can be achieved through a process that alienates the parliament. Uh, our sense is that a democracy, an elected government in a democracy must work with the elected parliament. And that anything outside the parliament, not elected directly by the people, is not representative of the popular will of the people. Because the popular of the people is, 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 is the parliament is the repository of the will of the Nigerian people. So if they want to work with the parliament, if the Nigerian parliament says this is the way to go, and the president would consider what to do. Let's take a breather. But when we come back, Professor Judy Ofo Adibe is still in our Abuja studio. He's a professor of um, a political science and author, Chiva Yade Banjo and Malam Garbashew are the panel on this side of the program for these about two and a half hours of um, shift on the celebration of Nigeria's independence. Don't go anywhere. We'll be talking about this nation, 59-year journey. Welcome back, everyone. It's a special program on the occasion of Nigeria's 59th independence. And today, as expected, the President Muhammad Buhari addressed the nation. He raised several issues from the economy to security, infrastructure, and power. So we're taking a look at the journey of the nation over the last 59 years. My colleagues, Ladia Kiridoluale and Ijoma Onyato, are the channel's televisions, amphitheater, uh, where they will drive the conversation much after when uh, we finish of from this point. My partner tonight, an elder state man and a chieftain of Afeni Ferry, a socio-political group, Chief Ayu Adebanjo. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. And from our Abuja studio, Professor of Political Science and an author, Professor Jidi Ofo Adibe, and also is Malam Garber Shehu, Senior Special Assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on Media and Publicity. Let me quickly go back to Abuja studio and get Professor Adibe's uh, intervention. Uh, Professor Adibe, uh, it's, it's nice to see you. Uh, give us a sense of how you will assess Nigeria's journey. Uh, how would you assess it in terms of uh, the successes and the failures and how far we have come as a nation? Yeah, thank you very much. I think uh, maybe before I say something, let me quickly say one or two things about the intervention by the very respected Chief uh, 
at Evanjo, and then my friend uh, Garovashehu on the issue of uh, restructuring or what they call true federalism. Uh, we don't believe there is anything called true federalism. Any federalism, every federalism is unique. Um, I will agree and disagree with uh, Chief Adibanjo and uh, with uh, Garubashehu. Yes, the First Republic, the First Republic, uh, there's a, often a tendency for many people to abstract some of the elements in the First uh, Republic and uh, present it as something that will be the panacea to all the problems we have. So that whenever you return to the pre or the kind of federalism we had uh, shortly after independence, it will be sort of a magic elixir that will solve our, all our problems. I do not believe that. I believe there are a lot of good things from that era. And there are also a lot of things we should not shy away from, you know, critiquing, including the fact that the regions held the center captive. Uh, returning to Garuba Shihu, um, it is true that uh, some of the issues in the restructuring debate are constitutional matters. But there are issues that demand extra re re legislative arrangement because issue of constitution of the parliament itself is one of the issues in the restructuring debate. There are people who believe that the entire structure of the country is skewed. And that's what they call geographic re restructuring. And if you don't buy into that argument, um, telling them that this must be a legislative agenda means that you're telling, look, since a section that is being accused of dominating the, leg uh, the legislature because of the structure of the com country, they will be the ones to decide, then we'll be back to square one. So I think, but I, I will agree with uh, Shehu in a way that uh, the argument about restructuring requires bringing all the stakeholders on board. It must have the buy-in of all the stakeholders for it to work. And then also timelines. There are some that will not work immediately. Not all changes that can be accommodated at the same time. Uh, quickly then to come to your main question, which was my own thoughts on our journey. Uh, John Campbell, uh, the US, uh, one time US ambassador to Nigeria, wrote a book some time ago, which he called uh, Dancing on the Brink. Nigeria dancing on the brink. I think that summarizes the situation of Nigeria. We've been so long on the brink, on the precipice, that it has more or less become our comfort zone. And you know one thing, when you become too comfortable in your comfort zone, that, well, I'm so used to being in this precipice, then one day you trip off without knowing it. And I think Nigeria is on that precipice. So the issue then, instead of dancing around and around, if you, if you pick up any analysis of Nigerian problems from the 1940s, they're basically saying the same thing. It is about how to work together as a nation. And we don't have to shy away. We just dance around. Uh, one a set of uh, group will come to power. They, they do things to protect their own interests. This interest broadly defined include ethnic, regional, class, religious. And another group will come in and try to undo it and try to protect its own interest. So basically, we have been dancing on the brink. That dancing on the brink means it's a sort of macabre dance. Uh, which Professor doesn't Adibé. take you forward. Professor and you don't f f fall over. Professor Adibe, let me ask you, and this is pointedly, uh, I, I should say, is that if you are to put it on, uh, hit the nail on the head, what would you consider as perhaps Nigeria's one and biggest problem? Is there anyone like that? I will put it, yes. I will put it squarely, the crisis in the nation building process. We have failed to be able to work together as to mold a nation out of the different nationalities that are aggregated to become what we call Nigeria today. And for as long as we don't have as that sense of nation, and for as long as the social distance among Nigerians continue to widen every day, every solution you try to throw at any of the myriads of Nigeria's problems will quickly become part of the problem. All right. Uh, in Professor, the country today, uh, we don't have an east. Let me allow, let me ask uh, Malam Garber Shehu. Uh, he's speaking for government and he's speaking for uh, President Muhammad Buhari. In the government of President Buhari, 
Uh, what is the government considering? Uh, is the government in alignment with what Chief Ayade Banjo, who has also raised the question on the essence of our nationhood? And Professor Adebe also has raised that issue. Does this government consider that as a major problem? If not, what is this government thinking as perhaps the major problem of the nation? Well, uh, let me first of all say that uh, we are 200 million plus. And for anyone to think that we will all think alike, we will all eat alike, dress alike, and speak alike, they are mistaken. There will be differences. And so that, therefore, the beauty of Federation for our circumstances is in the fact that all of us in our various colors and traditions and values will, will come to the center and contest for the space. And, and so therefore, free and open contest for ideas on what to do. And then, and then the idea that has the greatest following among the greatest number of people you know, prevails. And so therefore, they have said it all the time, that there is beauty in our diversity as a nation. This country was never intended to be a uniform people. We are not, we, we must not aspire to uniformity. Diversity is beautiful for our own country. What do I think is the most important problem that we have in the country? Don't forget that this is a country in which the president of the country before this time would call the governor of central bank and say, bring out $2.3 billion. And then they will put it on the table and they will share and they will go home. This is money that should have been used to buy weapons and to pay allowances for military soldiers who are sacrificing their lives for the country. Corruption is a big, big issue for this country. It's being fought. This country has, this administration has put in place the IPPS, for instance, more than 200 billion naira has been saved, ghost workers, ghost pensioners, everything is a ghost. And, and people think that there's no problem there. And so, yeah, the grammar is good, and let's uh, speak it all the time. But there are things that our people live with. If you go out there and ask them, perhaps the ruler, for, they are concerned for, how do we get fertilizer? Basic issues of living. Are there schools, are there classrooms that, that are not leaking? The roofs are okay and they're sitting for our own children. So, yeah, power game will continue and people will continue to contest for. But our position is go through an election. If we win power, then tell us how to follow you. Chief Adebanjo, uh, I would like uh, to also, also touch on and uh, look at what President Buhari had said. But I saw you nodding at some point when Malam Shehu and Professor Adibe were talking. It does look like you have some disagreement on the issue of nationhood and the issue of restructuring. Yes, yes. I'm very sad. And the way Garba Shehu answered my question shows the ignorance in the government, in the advisors of the government. Garba Shehu answered the question as if the question of restructuring of the government started with everybody's government now. The question of restructuring is fundamental. It is a thing that has started long ago, when, as far back as 2007, when the, the, the Buhari firm contested an election. And I and my friend supported him on the question of restructuring. I am repeating it, I have not repeated it. It is the same question that arose out of the country when uh, uh, Pastor Bakari was his running mate. The question of structuring was there. The same thing right now. When even uh, uh, Tinubu, when it was analyzed with him, the first thing on the agenda is structuring. That has to be clear. No, but Malam Shehu said, uh, no, no, it, I'm it, coming there. the idea of how to restructure no, is no, an no, That is why I'm coming to so. Because it's wrong. We don't believe this government or any parliament has the right to, 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 to take, give us a constitution. Our contention is this constitution is not ours. It's military imposed. 
How can you ask us to, to, to structure the country or to reform the country under a law of the Constitution that we are opposed to? It is wrong. As my professor said, what you need is a surgical operation, like having a constitutional conference. And to answer my, my friend uh, who said, uh, I regard the structure as cynical. No. When we refer to the federalism of the, of the pre dependence, is the basic thing. Our constitution and politics is dynamic. I'm not saying we should go back to three regions. I'm not saying we go back, but the contents of that constitution in 1954 that created premiership in the region as a great leader of government business under the usual form of government, that is, those are the basis I'm talking about. And those are the basis that we, we had independence. Oh, Chief Adebanjo, the, the question is how do we go about it? We should sit down round table and do it. This... Well, we've sat down for too long. No, we, no. There, there are several, um, well, there's been cry for sovereign national conference. There have been several national, Obasan, your heart is, Jonathan also had a national conference. But there, that's why I say we have been unfortunate. To have, people are just dangling about. The professor referred to it. Why sovereign national conference? Why all this constitution? Because the moment the ministry changed that constitution and said, we want to send you back to civil government, then we said, look, it was you ministry that imposed this unity form of government for us. The constitution, the ministry change was federal with all the perfe imperfection which the professor referred to, which is subject to change. But if that constitution has not been changed, and then you say, well, we should have been under that system, yes. Uh, 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 what's no, the way this out? Is, this is important. This is important because people often say, yes, you can't do this unless you are a majority. And that is, that is what they will say. Because you have come to the government by fear, by any means fear or foul, and you want to go, go, rule this country under that system, we will not accept. That's why we say we should come around. Now, you are talking of, we have come around several times. Have they implemented it? When we came around, the latest one we had is 2014. Uh, Buhari said, I'm not going to touch it. And there's no producer anyone. And people are saying that we don't want force. We don't want violence. This constitution is not ours. Let us agree on the constitution that we all agree to. Are we going to live together? Pardon, you want to live together? How? Uh, we must come together around the table. Okay. And if Buhari is not going to implement 2014, let him set his own. He can't impose this constitution on us under with the most powerful president in the whole world. Are you saying that if we don't uh, get another constitution, we cannot move forward? We, that, we, we, are, we can't. We are stuck. We can't. We can't. Okay. Let, I let... am positive about that. No matter what all this program are talking about, progress and all that, the fundamental thing is the basic thing of how do we do that. Okay. What is causing confusion? Ma Ma what is causing conflict? Yeah, Ma what you to need this. is the change of the constitution. Chief, Chief Ayade Banjo, over 90 years, is talking about uh, from experience, uh, practical ones. Uh, how do we move forward from here? He said we are stuck until we change this constitution. Is the government thinking in this line? Well, uh, I speak for a government that is democratic, that is uh, a, a product. Democratic, my friend. Of, uh, it, Man, is that democratic? The way you gave it to government? Don't let us bring that one majority here. majority of lawful votes to be in office. For most parts of the world, democracy <laughs> is the best, is the most suitable form of government. You go to the people with their points of view, including all of those things that Chief Adebanjo has said. Go and test them. If the people say this is what we want, you have your way. Under the system of democracy, as we have under our own constitution, we have a parliament that is elected by the people to do pro, to, to promulgate laws for the nation. Chief Adebayo says he does not believe that this parliament will give him the kind of. So I think that the, the, our ways are different. I represent a government that is elected through a democratic no, no process. No, no, imposed, and, imposed. And that's, what, that's what we are saying in court. Parliament in that's what we are ISP. saying as government spokesman. We don't the agree. The, the South, East, was. So South West, West proceed, Middle West, we don't agree. Shout the loudest. And then so therefore we come to the market square. We are the, we are the spokesman of an imposed government. And then decide how the constitution should be written. 
why can't we go to the people? If we think that... Who wrote this constitution? People, is it the people? Go to them. Let them put you in office. Is it the people? The Answer that question. President Muhammad Buhari... Your docu this document is a fraudulent document. It's not our constitution. It will be ridiculous you federal, for them to assume that President Buhari will come to the office and dish tear the constitution I and say that no, a, a I'm going to the market square because the people are not educated loud voices enough there. to know what we are talking they about. Want to they want to think other than the what the constitution provides. Right. Uh, Let's go with them. No, okay. I think that the expectation is unfounded. All right, we'll, we'll hear from Professor Adibe. Interestingly, I wish that we we're going to talk about President Buhari's speech at some point, but it's looking like we may not be able to do that at some point. But I will allow Professor Adibe to get back into the conversation, but we'll take a break and we'll come back to get our final thoughts on the program. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Uh, my bit of this uh, program, special program, and uh, the continued coverage of the 59th Independence Anniversary of Nigeria is just about over. Uh, but I will allow uh, Professor Adibe to come in, and then I'll get a few seconds of the uh, reactions from uh, the two other guests, and uh, we toss back to the Amphitheater China's headquarters where Ladi and Ijoma are waiting. Professor Adibe, if you are, you have um, uh, Malam Garibu Shehu there with you, just let's assume that's President Muhammad Buhari. And you had said that there is a problem of nationhood. There is a structural problem with Nigeria. Just in a few seconds, if you are to advise this government on where to, on where to go and how to go about it, what would your advice be? Well, the first thing is that I will say that the fundamental problem of this country, the, go the government seems to believe that the problem of this country is corruption and then it's devoting its energy to find a corruption that it has not even precisely defined. I think that's a fundamental problem on, its, on the part of the government. I think the problem of corruption, it believes, is just a symptom, a more fundamental problem. For us is to find out what is that more fundamental problem. And as I said before, um, it is the problem that we can't work as a nation. And for as long as we don't have an institution or an individual that enjoys legitimacy across the major fault lines, people will always view your moves with suspicion. Therefore, any solution you throw at the problems right. becomes part of the problem. Let me quickly also say that I do not so much agree with my friend uh, Garoba that uh, in a democracy, once you, the majority will always right. carry it. Well, no, that is called majority tyranny. There are, just like we, merit, meritocracy cannot prevail Pro in all circumstances, that is, you bring in affirmative action. Yeah. So you need extra measures, legislative measures to protect the views. Okay, if Professor, let every... me, I, I need to get the views and the final thoughts of the other guests, and that has to be in 20 seconds each. And, uh, uh, Padre Banjo, what would your final word be on a day as this, the way forward for Nigeria? If, if President Buhari loved this country, we structure the country now to federalism. Until you do this, no problem. Madam Garibashe, your final thought on the program? If anyone wants to restructure the country, they should take their views to the people, test them. If they win an election and come to the parliament, <laughs> the parliament will draft and present laws for president's signature. The president and the APC are committed to this change, whatever it is called, whether uh, uh, right. devolution of power, restructuring, or true federalism. We have written it our community in our in a, in, a, in a manifesto, and we're not running from that. But the process... We'll leave it at that. Malam Garba Shehu, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, thank you so much for coming on. Professor Gideon Adibe, thank you so much uh, for your thoughts and uh, the advice that you have given tonight on the program on Paid For. But it's a good one on a day as this. Thank you so much for coming. Chivayo Adebanjo, always a pleasure seeing you as agile as ever. Thank you so much for coming. And happy you. Independence. Well, that's how we leave it on this side of the program. And it's time for us to go over to Channel Television's Amphitheater, where Ladi and E. Joma uh, will take the boat and give you a ride to the end of the show. Ladi, Ijoma, 